one thing you would tell them? There's so many things. But what is something you want to make sure that, that you wish somebody would have would have told you or that you were told that would help you in the process? Number one, I think I would say, again, trust the process. You know, I went in with thinking it's just a photo shoot. And let them see, you want, you want Chanel to see you, the inside of you, your story, who you are, what you're about. So just, you know, walk in, have the confidence, let it just happen, let it unfold, let the magic begin because that's what she, she does. And, you know, mm -hmm. I was very fortunate that you were there and that meant so much to me because that added to the confidence level. But I, I just think you just need to go in with the, the right type of attitude and just let it unfold. Hey, I'm Stephanie Fager and Empower is my middle name. Okay, well, not really, but it should be. I believe that empowered people empower people, and I'm obsessed with empowering you, the nonfiction author, with impactful marketing strategies to help you take your important message and share it with those who desperately need it, want it, and will buy it. As the owner and chief strategist of the Empower PR group and the author of two books myself, I have merged my love for reading books and writing books and marketing books to help nonfiction authors like you with laser focused strategies and tactics to write books that sell, promote books to those who need and want them most, and build meaningful businesses from empowering messages. Think of this as your one-stop shop for marketing insights from an author who has been there, done that, and understands exactly where you are. All right, so get your pens ready because I'm ready to empower you on all things photography. This is the Empowered Author Podcast. Our social media world has become an extremely visual one. And now more than ever, photos matter. From selfies to live photos and headshots to lifestyle branding, photography is a way we tell stories. And for my author friends out there, I wanted to make sure you have what you need to tell your visual story in a way that complements your written one. For this season of the Empowered Author Podcast, we are focusing on the lens of photography insights you need to accompany your author branding efforts. And today's episode is a special treat. I had the chance to chat with Marcy Keithley, an amazing author that I've gotten the chance to work extremely closely with, and she's sharing some tips on author photography just from you, from her perspective. All right, come on. We have lots to talk about. Let's dive in. Marcy, I am so glad that you are finally on the Empowered Author Podcast. I was just thinking before our interview about how I've wanted you and I to be um, on the podcast together for quite some time. And so I'm so glad that you are on. And I'm so glad that you're on today to talk about author photography because I have a lot of amazing memories and experiences of our work together, but I have a lot of fun memories around when you and I got to do a photo shoot together. Really, it was your photo shoot, but I got to be there to support you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on. It's great to be here. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. So Marcy, you and I have had the chance to work together for quite some time on different aspects of, you know, your book and your author brand and a business that you've been growing and all of that fun, kind of how the, the authorpreneur world works where it all comes together. But it, it all started with this amazing book that you wrote called The Shoebox Effect. And I, and I feel like, you know, it's important, especially in today's episode where I want people to get a sneak peek into the value of photography. I think it's important to lay the foundation about your book because that was really a deciding factor on some photos that we got. Tell us a little bit about your story and about why you felt called to write this amazing book, The Shoebox Effect, which I think everybody should go out and buy. Well, thank you, Stephanie, again. You know, The Shoebox Effect is actually a personal memoir slash self-help book. And it is a personal story of mine from a time in my life when I was faced with very, very difficult situations. I lost a, uh, a baby to adoption in the closed adoption era back in the 70s. And 30 years later, you, we, we moved forward and I, I had uh, created a shoebox and put some mementos in it. I found it 
and revisited my past. And I got a little more than I bargained for. I wanted to write the story, not just because it was an adoption reunion story, but because my story does relate to humans on a very personal level. Mm-hmm. We all have these shoeboxes sure in our closet, whether they're physical, whether uh, they're spiritual. Uh, we carry them in our heart. We carry them in our minds. I just happen to have a actual physical shoebox that I carried around that contained secrets in a, in a painful past. And we all have those. We have keepsakes from happy times. But the ones that are difficult, you know, we want to shove those up to the top of our closet. And what I discovered in my journey, and it was a 10-year journey to write this book, was I wanted to reach individuals who experience loss and heartbreak like myself and show them how I found my way back out of the dark into peace and wholeness. So I have to unpack a couple of those things. Um, no pun intended, because that's what started <laughs> that's what started your journey, right? I have to so, but I do have to unpack a couple of things. First of all, you just shared something that I think is a a worry or a myth in the author space is you can write a book in a day in six months, and you can. I've done I did that with one, right? Like it's possible, but more times than not, you are not an anomaly in the fact that it you know was a ten year journey. My first book was a five year journey, and I, I actually venture to say sometimes the most vulnerable books that are written require that extra delicacy of time. So, you know, as someone who has read your book, has dug deep with you on um, elements of the book and its impact in other people's lives, I have to thank you for your vulnerability because it it does change people. The other thing I want to share that I think is really important for those listening to know is, you know, Marcy, you're right. Your book has such connection to the adoption world. And you went on to help help found a nonprofit to support individuals in this community, which is also beautiful. But I have no connection to adoption specifically, directly. And yet I read your book and I was moved and changed by it. So it's also proof that when you become unapologetic about who you're reaching, it doesn't mean that you're not allowing others in. And your book does because the unpacking is true. We all have something, whether it is a real shoebox, which yours was, or whether it is a figurative mental uh, shoebox that's living somewhere else. We are carrying baggage. Mm -hmm. And the only way to navigate truly through grief, loss, change, hardship, whatever that is, whether that is the loss of a child, the loss of a job, the loss of a marriage, um, the loss of a loved one, right, requires us to open the box, <laughs> to go back to the, through the to the hard and through the hard things to Absolutely. get through it. I was uh, recently at church kind of absorbing some of the messages that were shared. And that was something I walked away from recently that, you know, that you're not alone in the valleys either. And I feel like whether you are a spiritual or religious person outside of that, people like you, Marcy, being vulnerable, your book can become a tool to other people when they're in the valleys to show that you can get through it. You can make it to the other side. And the reality is, is there's, once you get on top of the hill, there could be other valleys still in your future. So I just, you know, I want to thank you for that. And I, and I, I think it's important that we share this because when we sat down and started working together, you know, we've worked on lots of different projects, but from increasing your visibility on social and your author platform and your website, we started to notice, I started to notice, Marcy, we need some photos over here. We need something to help visually tell this story. <laughs> that was an area that I think you were lacking in. You had so many great things, but that was something we yeah. needed and not just any photos, but stories that visually tell the story that this book has. So we did, we did a photo shoot and it was fun. Did you have as much fun as I did? I think you did. Yes. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it was so much fun. Yes, so much fun. And you know, it's, it's you know, the thing about it too, I, I, do, I do want to mention this to your listeners is that, you know, having a book is a wonderful accomplishment. It's so exciting, but yes. there's more to that. There's just so much more to it. And again, I overlooked the photos. I thought I had plenty and that was enough, but it was through, you know, meeting with you and our series of discussions that I realized that, you know, my website was lacking um, a better mm. glimpse of me. You know, I thought I had given it a really good 
shot, but I really needed. Well, you did give it a good shot. And even more than that, your website, you know, when Sandy and I got the chance to dig in, I mean, it's so beautiful. There's so many beautiful things about it, but something that I had noticed is we were using some stock photography and I'm not against stock photography at all. Sometimes that makes sense, but but sometimes stock photography feels stocky, right? I don't know a better word for it, Mark. Like it doesn't feel like it doesn't give me the connection. And sure. there are ways. And if you've been listening to the season of the Empowered Author podcast, and we talk about the detail shots and whatever, there are ways you can create stock photography for you that has you in it. And whether or not the person who is obs- um, observing or um, digging into the photos or your website or your social knows, they will feel it because it's in alignment with your brand. So we spent a lot of time on that and digging through that. So anyways, I want to talk all about it. So talk to me a little bit, because you said that you didn't, you thought you had, you know, you thought you were good. You thought you had enough. So you had a photo. I think there was only one, Marcy. I think you had one headshot. I did. I think I had a couple of different poses, but that same headshot, basically. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and it was beautiful, and it was great. And then, and then I then I kept going. But Marcy, there's so much more to you. You have so much more energy and love and life and excitement, and I want to see something else. Now, side note, I want those listening to know I am, and you know this about me, Marcy, I am not someone who's going to say you have to do all these things. You have to do them all right now and right this second. And it doesn't go that way. So when we worked together immediately, I wasn't like, Marcy, we have to do a photo shoot. Instead, we started to unpack different parts of how and what we wanted to do from your marketing plan. And that's when it revealed, you know what a, a, a professional kind of branding shot would be helpful. Um, And, you know, so, so talk to me about what was that click where you're like, yeah, Stephanie might be right. I think we probably need some photos. What was it that like made that click for you? Well, I just think, uh, again, you helped me to realize and understand that my story was so important and had so many components to it. But again, I believe that people that visited Mm. there, they didn't really have, they didn't know me. I mean, this, you know, it was that realization that okay, it was just a basic headshot. Okay, what does that say? I mean, you could write anything you want on a website, but I wanted people to really get to know Marcy. And the only way to do that was you, you helped me uh, and, and showed me that, you know, by with prompts and like pieces of the story and, mm-hmm. you know, pieces of me, we identified that and were able to go and just not only have some great photo, a great photo session, but some, we had a lot of fun. We really did. And it was, it was just, it was really exciting to actually sit on the floor with my shoebox and like the original shoebox. Fill that out to the world. Yeah. You know, the original shoebox. We did. And how cool was that? We that did. I think that that gave, that gives people a, a deeper look at me and how we viewed the, you know, I was looking at the cast and. It just said so much. It was so powerful. It does. Yes. Well, and, and that's what I keep going back to that, that we live in such a visual world. And yet as storytellers, we as authors tend to focus on the written word and don't realize that the visual story should be in alignment and could be in alignment. And actually, you know, picture tells a thousand words or more. Yeah. So, so I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing you just said, I think is interesting. And, and I think you're spot on is that the types of photos that maybe you had before didn't tell the story of Marcy at the full depth that it could. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, if, if you're thinking about getting author photos, I actually had a chat this week with another author and I just had another author do some photos. Both of them are out of state, Marcy. So they couldn't use our amazing photographer, even though one of them was trying to figure out how to get in to see Chanel, which we have many who do and it's worth it. Um, but in that process, I'm realizing that a couple things, one, you got to know what types of photos you're looking for. And it's really important to find a photographer who knows brand lifestyle photos too. As an author, you do need a headshot. One headshot can get you a lot of leverage and a lot of mileage for the book itself. But if you're going to go out and and talk about the book, going to have a platform, a website, social presence, you really want some of those more branding lifestyle shots. But you want that to tell your story and not all photographers are created equally, just like not all marketers are, right? And some photographers who are um, portrait or wedding photographers, if you try to ask them to do 
the types of shots that you and I were able to do together in our, in the photo session for you, Marcy, like you're going to, they're going to fall flat because they don't have the, they haven't got a trained their eye to get that branding lifestyle shot. Maybe the, the photo itself might be good, but it may not meet your needs or help you accomplish what needs to be done. So I think that's also important. Back to the shoot. We had fun. And I think that is something I don't, I don't outwardly talk a lot about, but I, but now I am, um, when I get the chance to work with authors and when we decide to do a photo shoot, I'm there. Like, I didn't say, go do this. I mean, even though I would have trusted you with Chanel, but I was there. I had fun with you too. Like you were getting your makeup done. And I was just like, I was smiling, watching you smile and ensuring that every step was. Um, methodical for you. So like you had a friend in your back pocket, you weren't alone. I hope you felt that way. Absolutely. You know, I learned in that session that as many photo shoots that I've had before, this one was so unique. And that again, you were there, my coach, you were there beside me. And that was really important to me. And I also learned really just not to question any of it because some of it didn't make sense to me, but the end result was like, Wow. Oh my gosh. Right. So like the one way when she had me post a certain way, I was like, why, why right. for the headshot, you, you can't see us podcast listeners, yes, but we, headshot, right. like, you have your arms what out. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. I have my arms out. Don't question the process. You have to trust the process. And by the way, that headshot is gorgeous. Uh, if I'm going to put a plug in here, we'll put it in the show notes. You should, everybody should visit Marcy J Keithley.com or the shoeboxeffect.com. And you will see the website that Marcy has up for her book. Learn a lot about Marcy, but also get the chance to see some of these photos we're talking about. Oh my gosh, the, the headshot was gorgeous. You know, one of my favorite shots is the main shot we have on your, as a hero image of you hiding behind the book. And we just see your eyes and this really cool hat on the other side. We wouldn't, you know, if we didn't know, so this is important. If the photographer is likely not going to read your book, I guess it's truth. They're busy, right? They're not going to do it. So if, if I hadn't been there and I'm not saying that I'm all that in a bag of chips, Marcy, but anyways, if you know, having, no, you're so sweet, but having a, someone who knows you and cares about you and knows your end goals there, what it does is it allows us to set up a situation to tell the story. Your book is about uncovering secrets and the way that you're holding your book is like you're peeking outside of the secrets. I mean, it's like gorgeous. It's so amazing. The photo of you on the ground with the photos like is brilliant. Remember the shot? Oh, this one was funny. The shot that Chanel took. Wow. She just did a photo shoot with your box and books over here. And, and you and I are like, hello, like, what are you doing? You know, we trust her. I trust her. Those are the shots are amazing. There was this like beautiful shadow coming in and it was like dark with light. Again, the basis of your book, (laughs) she was able to like articulate it. Hey, hey, Stephanie here. And I wanted to jump in and let you in on a little secret. I know I can't help every author prepare for their photo shoot in the way that I've had the chance to help Marcy, but I didn't want that to hold us back from helping you be prepared. In fact, I pulled together a quick planning checklist with some tips for you to consider as you plan your next photo shoot, and I want to ensure that you get access to it. Visit empowerprgroup.com slash author photography to download it today. I am confident you will find it extremely helpful. And side note, it's my think brain on what we use to prepare for every new author branding session. Okay, enough about that. Let's get back to the conversation. Yeah, and you know, that that particular shot, that reminded me of with the light coming, the light and the darkness, the, the mm-hmm. sun coming through, like it was, you know, opening the shoebox, exposing the secrets, exposing the truth. Yeah. That combination of the light yes. and the dark, that balance was just unbelievable. I never saw that one coming. I didn't either. And then the other one, this one. So we're putting, we're doing it right now where you put your, oh, so think about when your children are being crazy and you want to yell and scream. Instead, you just put your finger over your mouth. Like if you don't, shh, I'm going to go insane, right? <laughs> but there's a photo of you doing that. And it is oh, beautiful. It is beautiful. Yes. And you, now you did get, you did get your makeup done. And I actually think from the, you're a gorgeous human anyways. 
I don't, you probably didn't even need the makeup, Marcy, but what it did for your confidence in that shoot, I could see it. Like it gave you a confidence. If you're questioning that, I think how we landed there was we had a chat and I said, if you have the ability to pamper yourself a little bit, do it, do it. You'll be thankful. You'll feel it. The photos will reflect it. But talk to me. Okay. So you mentioned some of these detail shots. You and I had a lot of conversations about when we were preparing, like what clothes to wear and what things to bring, what went through your mind as you were preparing and what are some stuff that, that you think every author if you, would, if you ran into another author out there you, that's doing a photo shoot, what would you tell them to make sure they bring? Well, definitely a copy of their book. Yes. You'd be surprised, <laughs> don't Mercy. Don't about it. People don't. Don't leave home without it. <laughs> and several, actually, if you have several. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just really important. Things that just say who you are, that identify with, that connect with you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, my coffee mug with my little saying on it, mm-hmm. my book, my signature glasses. Oh my gosh. I love your glasses. You know, I was a diva that day. Sorry. You know? Yeah, you were. It was awesome. Yeah. It was just awesome. And I I know I just enjoyed every minute of it, but I would just say anything that, that personalizes you that without, like I said, those, those objects that just say, this is who you are. This is what I'm about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really, I'm glad you brought up your glasses. Didn't we have that day? um, Wasn't, didn't like one of the glass frames pop out or there was something on it or something and we were able to like make it work with those glasses. I'm trying to remember. Yes. Or you yes. couldn't see. No, it wasn't that Marcy. Was you got these the frames. It, the, pres- the prescription wasn't right. Yes. Wasn't it that? Yeah. <laughs> and no. you still warm and they were gorgeous. They were gorgeous, yeah. but it told you it told, I mean, now I have, I, now I know Marcy. I feel like I get your energy through these photos God, they're just some of my favorites. When I was thinking about um, the many authors that Chanel and I have been able to help, and I wanted to give um, those listening a glimpse into what it's like, you came top of mind because I thought, you know, the transformation that we were able to do on your website, leverage on your social, utilize in, you know, forthcoming books, all of that we were able to do. And not even with that many photos, right? Like you got a handful, like, I don't know, like under 10 or something like that. So it doesn't have to be a ton, just the right ones. This has to be the right ones. Absolutely. Yeah. And Chanel knew that we were going to do it for a web. Many of them were going to be used for website purpose. So she did what I love photographers to do. And that's please don't center yourself. Do not get yourself centered unless it's a headshot. I want negative space or we wouldn't have been able to use some of those amazing photos with you shushing or peeking out over the book or whatever. Yeah, it's really important um, to find the right photographer. Speaking of that, um, talk to me. What, what What did you think about Chanel? Like what was your favorite part about having her in the mix? Well, you know, she's... She was something else. I mean, she made me feel comfortable right off the, the bat. You know, I think that was really important. And yeah. like I said, I, you know, I've, I've had, uh, I've attended photo shoots before. So I thought I knew what I was stepping into. And she just has a, a manner about her. Obviously, she's very professional and she knows her stuff. And you're right. She didn't, she mm-hmm. hadn't read my book, uh, but she knew enough of the story to really get into me and knowing a little bit more about me. She took that time with me and and I just, I was just ecstatic. It was just, it was just so much fun. Didn't she, um, didn't, I'm trying to remember because she does this with me every time, but I think she did it with you too. She, Chanel loves music. She's a big Beyonce fan and she always likes to have some music playing because it gives everybody some energy. And I feel like I'm trying to remember, I feel like she said, all right, what kind of music do you want? And then she always says, if you don't say anything, it's going to be Beyonce. (laughs) Yeah. Because I'm, uh, I'm a seventies girl and, you know, classic rock. So I'm one of the Zeppelin and, you know, the Stones and that sort of thing. So yeah, we had, like I said, really a lot of fun. It was, and I would never have thought of that when the first time that I did a photo shoot with her, when she did that, I thought, oh, it does change things when I can like, um, listen to music in the process. Um, it, it really relaxed me uh, anyways, but but your photos were beautiful. I love them. I love everything about them. I still look at them when I you know go to your website and I'm just in awe of what 
Chanel was able to do and how it really has been able to tell your story. Uh, and I'm, and I'm thankful that you're sharing um, your, your experience and giving some tips to authors. I think I have one more question for you. There's an author listening who is preparing for a photo shoot or is interested in one. What is one thing you would tell them? There's so many things. <laughs> You can share a couple, but what is something you want to make sure that, that you wish somebody would have, would have told you or that you were told that would help you in the process? Number one, I think I would say, again, trust the process. You know, I went in with thinking it's just a photo shoot and let them see you want, you want Chanel to see you, the inside of you, your story, who you are, what you're about. So just, you know, walk in, have the confidence, let it just happen, let it unfold, let the magic begin because that's what she, she does. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was very fortunate that you were there and that meant so much to me because that added to the confidence level. But I, I just think you just need to go in with the, the right type of attitude and just let it unfold. Mm -hmm. Trust the process, trust the experts you know, I had a, a Sandy, our, my, our web developer on the team. You know her because she's worked with you too. She tells me all the time, mm -hmm. Stephanie, I can hang dry, drywall, but that doesn't mean I can build a house. And I said, if all of us would realize, right, we all have God-given talents that are unique to us. And if you just trust people who are doing that and then, and you kind of give up a little bit of piece of, of that worry or that perfectionism, great things can come, especially when it's been prepared for and strategized on the front end. Oh my gosh, Marcy, can we go do another photo shoot soon? <laughs> like this makes me want to go do it again. Um, yeah, I know. It'd be so much fun. Yeah, Chanel has a new office side note, a new studio, and it's pretty kick butt. So anyways, no, thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of that. I know it was a special day for you, but I want you to know, like, and I mean this, and you know this about me. I mean this to my core. It was just as special of a day for me to be a part of that with you and to watch um, you thank come you. to life and your confidence explode and your story to be told. So thank you for that. Uh, and thank you again for being vulnerable. Uh, I do believe that that books like yours are needed in the world and they are hard to get out and they take time and dedication, but they are so worth it and people will be changed by it. How I look at the adoption community and the adoption process and how I, I understand it is at a whole different depth now. And that is solely because of you and what you shared with people. So I mm -hmm. so appreciate that and all that you're doing. And I'm just so proud of you, my friend. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for having me on. And I, I hope to see uh, some of you over on my website. Yes, go visit it. Go visit it. Yes. We'll put the links in the show notes, but The Shoebox Effect is a book you will want on your reading list and read sooner rather than later. And Marcy is also just a gem of a human that has so much to share. So invite her come to come speak to your community and your group. She's great at it. In fact, she's when we get off today, she's prepping for a weekly call, that a weekly nation, international. It's international now, isn't it? Doesn't it go like it's international yeah. now. Yeah. A weekly international, international massive like telecast that she does for the adoption community. It's brilliant. She's brilliant. And now your photos align with that brilliance. <laughs> Thank you for being on the podcast, Marcy. Thank you, Stephanie. What an honor it was to join Marcy on her author branding photo shoot with Chanel. It is a day I'll always remember. Seeing her confident shine while capturing her story visually was just amazing. She was being pampered and let's be honest, shouldn't all of us authors get pampered sometimes? My key takeaway from my chat with Marcy on this topic is the reminder that when you know your story, you can collaborate with experts to help bring it to life. Marcy knew and trusted me and I know and trust Chanel and her photos speak volumes to that trust. So I encourage you to lean back and trust experts to help you accomplish your goals. I promise when you do, you won't be disappointed. We all know a photo is worth a thousand words and too bad author friend out there that the photo can't write a thousand words for you. Am I right? <laughs> the truth is that photos tell a story. And since you're in the business of storytelling, let's make sure that your author photography tells the right story. 
a story that aligns with who you are, what message you are sharing, and how people can work with you. Author photography can be game-changing in your marketing tools, a meaningful piece of your website, and a tool that you use in your visibility strategies. Chanel and I want you to get the most out of your photo shoot, so we've compiled a planning checklist to help take the stress out of planning your photo shoot and ensure that you are getting the most bang for your buck. Visit empowerprgroup.com slash author photography to get that downloadable. And if you happen to be in the greater Louisville area or are willing to come to us, believe me, we have plenty of authors who do. We'd love to capture your story through meaningful photography. And if Kentucky is too far of a drive, no sweat. We are happy to do a photo planning consultation with you and your photographer to help you achieve the best results that you seek and that you need. We are ready to empower you as you embark on your author photography needs. Now remember, empowered people empower people. I've empowered you. Now, with photos to help you tell your meaningful story, it is your turn to empower others.